Good morning, and welcome to First Baptist Church in Great in California. Because he lives, God and his most favorite of the hymns.
Pastor Sherman is going to be out of the uh, Gospel of Mark, and he is in Mark 2, verses 6 through 12, with a possible title of Faith, F-A-I-T-H, Pastor. Okay. Yes, today's sermon talks a great deal about faith. I guess that interwinds the whole verses that we have. It also talks about the authority of Jesus, which ties into faith directly. But think about, today's passages occur uh, after uh, another event. Uh, they, they actually tell us about an interesting event. That is, Jesus had entered Capernaum, which, and earlier he had entered the home of uh, Peter, and Peter's mother, mother-in-law was sick, and he cured her. And uh, while, so there's a lot of thought that people think he was teaching for today's verses in Peter's home, because he is in a home. Uh, but think about this. There were so many there that while Jesus was preaching, others wanted to go and hear him speak. And so what happened is they, they had a paralytic. That is somebody who could not walk and couldn't get in the room. It was packed. So they went up on the roof and made an opening and lowered him down. Now, can you imagine going on somebody's roof because you want to go inside their house and visit and listen to a talk and putting a hole in the roof and then lowering yourself down? Well, they, the roofs are a lot simpler than then today, but it's still quite a quite a thing to do to somebody else's house. Well, they were going to any lengths to see and hear Jesus. How far would you go or what length would you go to hear Jesus if you knew he was present? Would you go to those links to open up a hole in somebody's roof to go in and listen? So they lowered this man into the room, and then an extraordinary thing happened. And in Mark 2, 5, we do see a verse where Jesus says, Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. So more is going on here than meets the eye. We need to more closely realize the extent of the miracles Jesus did. What, how much are they really showing? Did he just cure somebody? Or is there something else that, that is demonstrating in their culture? And the second thing is Jesus did prove he was God through his actions. I don't know about you, but I've run into a lot of people that say Jesus never said he was God. Well, actually, he does in three or four, about eight verses where he has the, I, the famous I am verses. There's eight of those, but also his actions testify. And this is one of those deals. So we'll be talking about the authority of Jesus or the faith that we are to have in him. So if you open your Bibles to Mark chapter 2, verse 6, and the first thing we're going to see there is you cannot hide your thoughts from God. So if you think you're hiding them from me or somebody else, that may be true. Unless the Holy Spirit tells us what you're thinking. 
But the truth is, you cannot hide your thoughts from God. But some of the scribes are sitting there, thinking to themselves, Why does he speak like this? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Right away, Jesus understood in his spirit that they were thinking like this within themselves and said to them, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? So Jesus knows what's in our heart. We can't hide it. Also think, how would it be to be thinking something about somebody and have them turn around and say to you and answer what you're thinking? That should kind of get you a little off kilter for a moment. But many of these people who are listening to Jesus were scribes, also known as teachers of the law. Some of them may have been Pharisees, which are uh, uh, leaders in the in the in the, the religion or law. Luke five seventeen. We have some clarification here. On one of those days, while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there, who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea, and also from Jerusalem. So this occurred in uh, Capernaum, which is the capital province of Galilee. And notice that these religious leaders were not just local synagogue leaders. Most likely, they had more than just curiosity of his teaching, as is evidenced by their behavior before and after. They probably hoped to trap him on a theological point that, that would be considered blasphemy. And with blasphemy, they could put him to death and get rid of their threat, what they perceived as a threat to their authority and power. They probably um, uh, sent these people in deliberately so they could have lots of witnesses. Now, Mark further explains this in chapter 3. Mark chapter 3, verse 6. Immediately, the Pharisees went out and started plotting with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. Now, the Herodians were influential Jews who favored the Heronian, that is, King Herod's dynasty, and supported Rome. Um, and keep in mind now that you're a king in name only. They were appointed by Rome. They really weren't kings or the line of uh, David. Now, they saw Jesus unsettling their political situation, their power situation. And since they did not believe who he said he was, they plotted to destroy him. Now, the, the theology that they're looking at is, is that the Messiah could not forgive sins. That is, their records and their uh, prophecies on the Messiah was that the Messiah would be a great prophet, but it had nothing about him even God's power for being able to forgive sins. God just reveals this later through Jesus. In other words, they don't have all the information. God doesn't have to tell us all the information. He tells us what we need to know. Only God is the judge and enforcer of his laws. Now, God says he has the ability to erase your sins. He does this in Isaiah 43, 25. You know, that's hundreds of years before Jesus. It is I who sweep your transgressions for my own sake and remember your sins no more. That's God speaking or Jeremiah, um, Isaiah quoting him what God is saying right there. So God is telling Isaiah he has the ability to forgive sins. Now, Jesus is saying he's God whenever he forgives sins or gives forgiveness. If Jesus were just a man, even just a Messiah as they understood a Messiah, this would be blasphemy. And as such, he would have to be punished. However, they were wrong in their thoughts. He was God and Messiah, which means what he was saying was not blasphemy. Again, something I've been saying for the last three weeks, contempt prior to investigation. They did not recognize who he was. They didn't do their homework. In seminary, you write a paper, and we come up with a point of view or a theological idea. We have to prove it. Not by opinion, but going to the original language and the culture and showing why we, why we have this position. They didn't do their research. They didn't do their homework. You know, I'd be an F in a seminary class. They just jumped to a conclusion and treated it as fact. So they were showing contempt. Now, the Greek verb used to forgive refers to sending away or driving away. So Jesus was removing sin and taking the sin upon himself. And being God, he knew their thoughts. And each time he had a theological run-in with the religious leaders, he won. Of course, if he's God in human form, God incarnate, of course he'd win. Who can win a theological argument with God? I don't know anyone who can. I wouldn't know anyone who could start to. 
Now you show you believe in the authority of Jesus or have faith in him by knowing he knows your thoughts. Have you ever criticized or judged someone, maybe condemned them in your own thoughts? Did they know your thoughts without speaking to you? Did you ever know what your parents were thinking without any words spoken? Now being God, Jesus knew what the religious leaders were thinking as God knows everything we think and do. John chapter 2 verse 25. This is uh, referring to Jesus. He did not need anyone to testify about man, for he knew himself what was in man. God already knew. Now, if we move on, what we see here in the next verse, just verse 9, Jesus shows his authority by showing anything is easy to him. Now, surely you found things in life that are quite hard. Like in our case this morning, just a few moments ago, getting our speakers to work in this church. Now it's 70 years old, and sometimes age even affects equipment. So Mark 2.9. What is easier, to say the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, pick up your mat, and walk? So he gives them a choice, either or. He asks them really a trick question. It'd be like, when did you stop stealing? See, neither solution is easier. Both are equally impossible for people. Only God can forgive sins or heal people. It is easier to say forgiveness, but it's also hard to prove it. I mean, how do you prove that somebody is forgiven? Because you said they're forgiven, how do you prove that God forgave them because you said it? What human can prove to forgive sins that only God can forgive. Having a paralytic be healed is easy to prove. The fact that one can walk proves the healing. You can't deny that. Only God can heal with his word. Notice that the question Jesus asked them is not answered, which by the way happens a lot when he's in theological discussions with religious leaders. They don't answer them. By giving credit to Jesus for the good things that happens to you shows you believe he has authority. It shows you have faith in him. Now the passage is showing us that only God can do what man cannot do. World peace, strong economy, great wealth, that does not come from man. You may think it does, it does not. These things only come from God through Christ Jesus. To think man does these things, like politicians, pundits, the media, is, like, is an attitude like those who were building the Tower of Babel, Genesis 11.4. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky. Let us make a name for ourselves. In other words, man was attempting in Babel to put himself above God. They weren't making a name for God, they were making it for themselves. Hence, they were displacing God for them. Now, God is in charge. He can do anything for believers in Christ. We see this in Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4. Then I heard a loud shout from the, a loud shout from the throne. Look, God's dwelling is with humanity, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will no longer exist. Grief, crying, and pain will no longer exist because their previous things have passed away. Can any politician or media source give that to you? Only God, not man, can do these things. And then finally, we look at uh, verses 10, 11, and 12. Those of us who do not believe in the authority of Jesus will be amazed by his power. Those of us who don't believe in or have faith in him will be amazed at his power. It's the same thing. But so that you know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he told the paralytic, I tell you, get up, pick up your map, and go home. Immediately he got up, picked up the map, went out in front of everyone. As a result, they were all astounded and gave glory to God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. At the command of his voice, we see that Jesus healed the man. At the command. 
So Jesus at first was speaking to the religious leaders. He's having a discussion with them back and forth. Then he changes his focus to discussing theological things with them to talking and addressing directly the victim, the paralytic. And he uses these miracles, or this miracle, to reveal his deity. He does this frequently. He uses miracles to reveal his deities, not to provide a circus act or anything else. You know, like, look what I can do. It's to, it's, it's to, to get us to wake up and see and understand who God is. Now remember, healing shows forgiveness. And only God can forgive. Illness was frequently considered the result of sin. Healing, healing in and of itself shows forgiveness that only God can give. So Jesus did not just remove the illness that crept a man from walking. What's overlooked by a lot of people reading this passage is if any of you have been injured for a while in a cast, like a leg cast or arm cast, remember my shoulder was broken. I had very little use of my left arm for, for weeks because it hadn't been in use. The monies went into atrophy. Well, think of a man who's been been, been unable to walk for years, if not decades. And suddenly, he gets up and walks away. His muscles had not had time to develop. He hasn't had time to, to remember how to balance. It's not just he was healed physically from whatever kept him from walking, but all, everything attached to his legs was healed too instantly, as though he had practice and rebuilt those muscles that hadn't been used. When Jesus cures people, the miracles are huge, and the apparent witnesses are left with great impact. It leaves an impression on them they can remember. That everyone, including religious leaders, praised God. I notice they kind of left Jesus out of the whole picture, <laughs> but they praised God. At least that was an improvement. But notice they did not praise Jesus at all. The emphasis of these verses is, is on the miracle and not the empathy to the cripple. It's not about Jesus having empathy on the on, on the cripple. It's about a miracle showing that he can forgive sins, and as a result of forgiveness of sins, a person is healed instantly, which reveals his deity. The forgiveness of sins here is a declaration of the presence of God's kingdom. Now, you show you believe in the authority of God when you no longer believe in luck. Think of it this way. You show you have faith in Christ when you no longer believe in luck. They both work the same way. You ever have a, a, a lucky day? Now, if you believe in God, if you have faith in relationship with Christ Jesus, how could you believe in luck? Have you received good fortune or was it a blessing from God? Again, there's a big difference. Have you ever been amazed that something wonderful has happened? Stop and think. If God can do anything, how can we be amazed? Mark 10, 27. Looking at them, Jesus said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, because all things are possible with God. Remember my dead Pomeranian on Good Friday it was in my arms. I was carrying her back home to, to tell my wife. The horrible thing had happened. She had a heart attack and died while I was walking her. And I prayed to God. And next thing you know, she started breathing again. I didn't do that. God did that. Just as he brought breath back into me and I was killed in a motorcycle accident on April 4th, 1997. And I didn't even believe in God then. But I knew where the, where the air came from. When misfortune comes our way, God may tr be trying to get our attention. The key is, what do we do with it? Do we withdraw from God? Do we blame others? Do we draw closer to God? Could it be that God is calling us to come closer when misfortune occurs? We're not paying attention. He's trying to get our attention. Do we choose to be obedient to God or isolate away from him in hard times? Only you can answer those questions. But the thing is, you cannot hide your thoughts from God. Jesus shows his authority by showing anything is easy to him. And those who do not believe in his authority or have faith in him will be amazed by his power. Now, I have a real simple challenge for you, and that is to tell somebody how you show you believe in the authority of Jesus. How do you, how do you show your faith in him? 
How do you do that? If you do not believe in Christ, this is a great time to do it. This is going to be a very interesting year. A lot of things we may not expect may happen, or many things that surprise us. But remember, we need to have our faith and belief in Christ. This is a time to accept Him right now and be at peace with only the peace that He can give, which is eternal peace. May God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Pastor Michael. And yes, I agree with that. Have a wonderful and uh, wonderful and peaceful week. Have peace like the river that only flows through your relationship with Jesus Christ.